Hi students, um, this is Mrs. Johnson. We're just going to finish up the notes from today by talking about bomb calorimetry quickly. And actually before I do that, I'm sorry, I want to finish up that exercise 7 that we started in class. So if we worked exercise 7 the exact same way we worked the previous exercise, we should have found that the delta H total was negative 200 and, or sorry, negative 26 kilojoules. Um, and that was after rounding for sig figs and everything. However, that was just the, the total heat that was generated from the reaction in the calorimeter. The question actually asks us to calculate the enthalpy change per mole of barium sulfate formed. So what that means is that we're ultimately going to have to figure out how many moles of barium sulfate were formed in this reaction and then divide our total answer by the moles of barium sulfate that, that reacted. So if we come up with a balanced equation here, um, we should find that it looks something like this, and I'm just typing quickly here. Um, barium nitrate plus sodium, oops, that's not a plus sign, plus sodium sulfate, really struggling here with typing, uh, yields barium sulfate plus sodium nitrate. And if we balance it out, we should see that we just need um, a 2 in front of the sodium sulfate. So for every 1 mole of barium nitrate that we have and for every 1 mole of sodium sulfate, we're going to wind up with 1 mole of barium sulfate. So let's check and see how much of each of these reactants we actually had in the problem. If we look at our, um, our solutions, we had one mole of barium nitrate, one liter, one, mol one molar, so that means we had one mole of barium nitrate. If we check the other solution, we had one mole reacting. So in this case, we don't really have a lot of stoichiometry to do because we had one mole of each of these reactants, so we're going to come up with one mole of product. So this delta H still holds true. Had we started with different amounts of barium and different amounts of sulfate, that could change our total answer here because we may not have um, exactly one mole of barium sulfate formed, and then we'd have to divide by the moles formed. Okay? In this case, the answer is just going to be negative 26 kilojoules still. All right, now let's talk about the bomb calorimeter. This calorimeter is a constant volume calorimeter, and if we look at... Sorry for all the, the craziness with the lines. If we look at this picture over here, this is the basic bomb calorimeter. Um, these are often used for combustion reactions. So this little container in the center, this is called the bomb. It's surrounded, it's a rigid metal container. It's surrounded by water, which is held in by a rigid metal container. Um, so we put whatever reactants we want in here and then ignite them using these electrodes. And whatever heat is given off by this reaction that's happening in our little bomb, that heat that's given off by the system or the reaction is going to be absorbed by the bomb and then by the surrounding water. And we've got a stirrer here to mix up the surrounding water. So we can use this to measure the heat given off by combustion reactions taking place in the bomb. Um, so this little rigid bomb here, uh, the pressure is definitely going to go up when we do a combustion reaction um, because we're creating moles of gas. However, because it's a rigid container, container, the volume cannot change. So the delta V, or the change in volume, is going to be zero for this. This means that there's no work done here. Because if we remember back to work, the equation for work is negative P delta V. If our delta V is zero, um, we're going to have zero work. Thus, when we use um, a bomb calorimeter to measure the heat of reaction, we are actually measuring the energy of the system. However, for our purposes, we're going to use that interchangeably with delta H. It's still the heat of the system. Um, <clears throat> because in this case, all of the energy is coming from heat. So when we're doing these equations, the, the way to think about this is that the energy of the system, or the energy of whatever's happening in this little bomb, is going to be the opposite of the heat that the bomb container itself and the water around the, the bomb gain. So our reaction is the delta E equals negative Q bomb plus Q water. In this case, we've got to factor in the, the, 
this heat that the bomb itself is going to absorb or give off. Um, this we can break down a little further if we had to. Let's see. To E equals negative, if we think about the Q bomb, um, that would be M, the C of the bomb, and delta T. I'm going to add some parentheses in here. Plus the Q of the water, which we know is the mass of the water, the specific heat of the water, and the change in temperature of the water. Um, T, parentheses. Okay, so this is our equation for, this is the advanced equation for bomb calorimetry. However, um, after looking in your book, the book makes it a lot simpler for you. For all of the bomb calorimeters used in the book, they lump together the bomb and the water surrounding it. And they have calculated one specific heat for the total calorimeter itself, bomb plus water. So when we're solving book equations, they're not going to give you all of these pieces. Instead, for the book, they are just going to give you the, the specific heat of the whole thing. So the book equations are super simple. It's just the change in energy equals the change in temperature times the, the specific heat of the whole calorimeter itself. Okay, and they have already factored in the mass of the calorimeter, um, so that component of the equation is taken out. So whatever the heat change in this guy times the specific heat must be the heat coming off of this reaction. Okay. So there's a simple problem down here. It's comparing um, combustion of a 1.5 gram sample of methane and combustion of a 1.15 gram sample of hydrogen gas in the same calorimeter. So here they give us the specific heat of the calorimeter, 11.3 kilojoules per degree Celsius. They tell us the temperature change for each um, combustion reaction, and then they ask you to compare the two. So try working out this problem, and then we'll go over the answer at the beginning of next class. Bye.